Motorcycle maintenance can seem pretty intimidating. Let's talk brakes. There's two technologies in the marketplace. Sintered, S-I-N-T-E-R-E-D, and resin. Sintered, base material, copper. Resin based material, Kevlar. Where you ride determines which pad to use. If you ride in the dirt, wet, deal with a lot of aggressive braking, centered pads. If you're just out there running around in the street, Kevlar. Kevlar actually grabs a little bit quicker than the centered pads do, and the heat transfer is a little different. With a heat transfer on a centered pad, it transfers into the caliper. They come with these little radiators to be able to help them cool down. You put them on the back of your pads and then you install them. I don't use them. Kevlar, it radiates heat into the rotor. The wear is a little bit different also. The wear on a Kevlar pad is slower, has a tendency to save your rotors, where the wear on a centered pad is a little bit less, but it's a little harder on your rotor. So with that, you pick which one you want to do, and let's go install them. These calipers are pretty generic. From the year 2000 and up, they're on all bikes. Harleys, Hondas, you name them, they got them. Two methods on pulling these pads off of the calipers. One is with them on the bike, the other's off. How to do it on the bike? You get a screwdriver, you jam it up between the rotor and the pads, and you can press the pistons back up into the caliper. I don't suggest doing that. Problem with that is you bend your rotor. The right way to do it is take the caliper off the bike and go from there. So let's take it off the bike. To ensure I don't accidentally use the brakes while the caliper is off the bike, I use an indicator to remind me not to touch the brakes. Now that the caliper is off the bike, you now have to get the pistons back in the caliper. You can do this by either using a screwdriver and prying the pistons into the caliper you can get a brake tool, or you can do what I do and use channel locks. Using a shop rag to protect the caliper, clamping both caliper and the worn pad still installed, squeeze to compress the pistons into the caliper. Using the worn pads protects the pistons from damage. After you compress the pistons, remove the dust cap on the bottom of the caliper and remove the pad pin. This is done by an Allen wrench, and your pads will fall right out. And there you have it, two pads out. This is what it looks like when all of the pistons are compressed back into the caliper. With the old pads out, new pads come in. Take tab A, put it in slot B. Firmly seated, take the pad pin, insert that to hold your first pad in. Second, take your second pad, place that tab A into slot B. Move your pin all the way in, and then tighten it up. Real hard, huh? Note to self, this pin, you tighten it too tight, the heat from the caliper will lock it in, you'll wind up stripping the head and having to either machine it out or replace the caliper. Save yourself some hassles. Changing pads, easy peasy. Manufacturer's recommended break-in period, tribal knowledge, 150 miles. Let your pads and your rotors get to know each other. 